Welcome to the AFLCA Exercise Theory video series supplementing Chapter 7, Basics of Anatomy. In this video, we're discussing characteristics of muscles, types of muscles in the body, functional properties of muscles, types of muscle action during exercise or movement, and roles that muscles assume during exercise or movement. Types of muscles. There are three types of muscles in the body, smooth, cardiac, and skeletal. Smooth muscle is responsible for involuntary contractions and is found in walls of the intestine, blood vessels, and internal organs. Cardiac muscle is just that, heart muscle responsible for involuntary contractions or pumping of the heart 24-7. Skeletal muscle is the muscle that attaches to bones and pulls on the bones causing movement. It is responsible for voluntary contractions. In other words, it's under our conscious control. Functional properties of muscles. Muscle is just not a squishy tissue hanging onto bones. It has some fascinating functional properties, specifically excitability, contractility, extensibility, and elasticity. Excitability is the ability of muscle to receive and respond to electrical stimuli from the nervous system. Contractility is the ability of muscle to generate force as a result of receiving this electrical stimuli. When we think of the term muscle contraction, we usually think of a muscle shortening, for example, as in the up phase of a bicep curl. This is one type of contraction. However, muscle can generate force but not shorten. It can stay the same length, for example, during a plank exercise. It can also lengthen, as what happens in the down phase of any exercise, such as a bicep curl. More on this shortly. Extensibility is the ability of muscle to be stretched or extended beyond its resting length. And elasticity is the ability of muscle to return to its resting length or original shape after shortening or lengthening. Types of muscle action. Let's go back to the concept of muscle contraction, again stressing that the word contraction can mean muscle shortening, but it can also mean muscles staying the same length and muscles lengthening. Other common terms are muscle action, muscle force generation, or muscle force production. There are three types of muscle action. Isotonic, which consists of concentric and eccentric phases, isometric, and isokinetic. For isotonic, iso means same and tonic means tension. For example, if you're lifting a five pound dumbbell, it's the same five pound dumbbell the entire time you're lifting it. The concentric phase is the up phase of an isotonic movement. During this phase, the muscle shortens and the movement is usually against gravity. For example, the up phase of a bicep curl. The eccentric phase is the down phase of an isotonic movement. During this phase, the muscle lengthens and the movement is usually with gravity. For example, the down phase of a bicep curl. For isometric, iso means same and metric means length. For example, if you're doing a plank exercise, your muscles are generating plenty of force, but they're not shortening or lengthening. They're staying the same length. Isokinetic. Iso means same and kinetic means speed. For example, hydraulic exercise equipment, often found in physio clinics or circuit style facilities, are such that you can generate as much force as you can, you can push as hard as you can, but the equipment will move at a constant speed. Roles of muscles. The final concept we'll cover in this video is the different roles that muscles can play during movement. The four different roles are agonist or prime mover, antagonist, synergist, and stabilizer. Note that all muscles can do all the roles. It just depends on the exercise. Sometimes a muscle may be the agonist. Other times it's functioning as a stabilizer. 
The agonist muscle is the prime mover, the muscle most responsible for the movement. For example, for a biceps curl, biceps brachii is the agonist. The antagonist muscle is the muscle that's allowing the movement to happen. It's usually on the other side of the bone. It can also help protect the joint. For example, during the bicep curl, the triceps is the antagonist. It's lengthening to allow the bicep curl to happen. A synergist is a muscle that's helping out. It's not working as hard as the agonist. For example, two smaller biceps muscles, brachialis and brachioradialis, are the synergists during the biceps curl. A stabilizer helps secure a joint or body segment while the movement is happening. During the biceps curl, the rotator cuff muscles are stabilizing the shoulder girdle, and the core muscles are stabilizing the spine and pelvis. Should we do another example? The up phase of a squat. Let's focus on the hip. Agonist, gluteus maximus is shortening. It's extending the hip. Antagonist, iliopsoas and rectus femoris on the front of the hip are lengthening, allowing this movement to happen. Synergist, hamstring muscles are shortening, helping extend the hip. Stabilizer, core muscles are stabilizing the pelvis and spine. In this video, we've discussed a variety of characteristics of muscles. You may need to watch this video a few times and also download the transcript to help you digest and understand all the information. Thanks for watching.